So we're here at the CCA workbench, Dave, <laughs> yes, and Riggs and Techniques. You got something new for us this week. What yeah. do we got? Well, we're talking about bluegill fishing, and you know, it's probably the first fish we all catch. You know, when you're fishing out of your you know lake or whatever somewhere. You know, I'm lucky to be living on the lake where I caught my very first one. But you know, a bluegill is a they're great fish because they're great for the family to catch. They're they're really good to eat if you catch them in clean water. They fight hard. They're willing to bite usually. And you know they're just a, a great all-around fun fish to catch. Right about now in the springtime, and when the water hits 70 degrees, they start to bed up, and the and the big males will make these little 12-inch, uh, like a plate-sized little bed in, in in water from one to two feet, and they like gravels or, or sand preferably if they can find that. And if you can find them when they're all bedded up like that, you're going to catch a mess of them because not only are they eating, but they get very aggressive. Uh, trying to protect their bed and everything and so you know we're lucky we have a lot of them and and we get a lot of bluegills stocked into ponds and stuff well, the bad thing about bluegill besides the fact that they they're very prolific is that they can take over a lake so you got to be really careful and be sure that you don't have a ton of little uh, bluegills in there because they'll never get big if they're eating all the food they, they love to eat invertebrates insects they'll eat minnows and stuff uh, but Insects are what they primarily eat: crickets and you know anything that falls in the water, uh, worms, uh, you know just about anything. But the best thing to use is a you know a good six-pound test uh, with a drop shot, uh, with, or with a with a bobber like this. This is like six-pound test. This came off a, a cane pole, and what you'll what you'll do is you'll have your six-pound test line or even four-pound test line, an Aberdeen-style hook. You want a long shank hook because all these sunfish. Uh, have a very small mouth even even when they get pretty big their mouth is pretty small compared to their head so if you have a no shank on the hook he's going to swallow it right all the way down and you're going to have a hard time getting your hook back i would suggest if the fish swallows it all the way down and you're not going to keep the fish just go ahead and cut it off and let him go with the hook in it instead of trying to get it out but the long shank aberdeen hook even up to a six aught i mean a big a, a 10 inch uh, bluegill will weigh a pound the right. world record bluegill is, is four pounds. And, and you can buy kits, right? Correct. With different size hooks. Oh yeah, yes. You know, you can you can buy the from, from the tiniest to the to the biggest one. And you know, the, the little short shank ones are, are good for, you know, you know, tiny if you're trying to catch uh, let's say shiners right. or, or minnows right. or stuff like that for bait or you know, but but then you want to go to use an Aberdeen or something bigger. Right. Now uh, if you're going to be using a spinning rod or something, this you, you, you can use a drop shot. This I, you, I wouldn't use a weight that big, but this is a we good... We do this for the sake of TV so exactly, everybody so you can, can see, see it. what it is. But you use a drop shot weight, you know, probably a 1 16th or a 1 32nd, and then your Aberdeen hook, on, you know, a suspended above. Right. Yeah, above your thing. And you can put, you can put uh, you know, the probably the best bait in the world is a cricket. Or a grasshopper that you or catch right there. A night crawler. A night crawler worm, any kind of worm. Uh, a maggot works really good. I mean, they if usually you can put it on. <laughs> I can't touch them, but a lot of guys, <laughs> you know, that's one of my things. I can't, I can't, I can't touch a maggot. But a maggot is a great bait for for these things. You put yeah. a little white maggot on there. Sometimes they'll do, uh, you know, to have surf and turf. They'll put a maggot and a cricket. You know, try to, get, try to get both of them to eat. My favorite way to catch brim, though, is, is with a spinning rod and a little jig, you know, like this. I used to use a thing called a brim killer when I was a little kid, and it was nothing but a black jig head with some deer hair on it. Right. And, and, and it was, you know, the, I remember they used to cost 99 cents a piece, and I used to go beg my grandmother for a $5 bill so I could go buy five of them at a time because they work really great. I guess they look like a little fly or a little water beetle or something. Yeah. But, you know, like a beetle spin, which is a famous, uh, as famous as you, uh, brim bait as you can get. Everything eats the beetle, sprint, beetle spin. I also like to use these little uh, roadrunner heads, the same things you use for crappie and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I like the, the, they have the little blade on them and that adds extra attraction so you can get stuff to come and, and, and eat that. So. Now, what about guys that like to fly fish, Dave? You know, I my first introduction to fly fishing was same thing what mm -hmm. you have here, an eight or a six or even a five weight. Right. And a little tiny popping 
right? Well, I bought, I bought that whole kit at Academy for $29. This whole fly rod kit with the flies and everything. It's already tied. Everything, all I had to do is pull it out, and that, which is perfect for me because I'm not a big fly fisherman. Although, the very first, one of the very first brim I ever caught was on a fly rod in a, in a creek in Alabama because I had a, a, so, a Yankee fella from Massachusetts. <laughs> he was there and he was out there fly fishing, and I said, oh, it looks better than this worm I'm using. So, so let me show you one thing, Dave, it's really critical. Mm -hmm. Saltwater fly fishing, freshwater fly fishing, whatever it may be. If for whatever reason you're casting by the nature of casting if you any of the fly gets wrapped around the hook they called they call that fouling the fly fouled. or maybe it's uh the piece of this feather when it gets wrapped like this now guys if this is salt water it could be a bonefish fly a tarpon fly a redfish fly any type of fly if it gets fouled like this mm -hmm. you're out of the game so by the nature of the cast the whipping back and forth you got to make sure, check that from time to time if you're not getting a bite. Because right. what could be happening is your fly is fouled and you don't know it, and the fish do, but right. you don't. Well, it's hard to beat a good popper and fly for a brim, you know, anywhere. And that sound that they make a panfish makes awesome. when it eats a topwater fly. You got to be careful not to haul it's, back. <laughs> right. <clears throat> all right, Bree, we've given it our all over here about brim. All I can say, Dave, is that you ruined the whole concept of surf and turf for me. Uh -huh. <laughs> 